folks, at the end of the day, a lot of people get involved with real estate investing because of the money, cash flow, profit, wealth. But at the end of the day, you need to remember you are in the services or AKA people business. This is not about spreadsheets. It's not about you know bricks and sticks. It is about people. So let's have a conversation about time, trust, while you are running your business and building your portfolio with the one and only Dana from Hemlane. How are you doing, Dana? Great. Thanks for having me back on today. Yeah. What do you think about this? Because again, you know this, right? You have all of these clients and, and tens of thousands of units, but it, you're in the people business, right? You are the go-between, the vehicle for multiple communication points. And because it's a people business, you, you have to commit time, but also trust. Trust is so vital. Let's talk about that. Yeah, trust is built over time. And so um, the reason I think it's so important is obviously there's everything objective you have to do as far as um, employees. So hiring the right talent, and this could be employees or contractors, right? Contractors for your rental sure. property, um, folks who work with you. Um, you go through that and, and you're obviously very objective in that process. It's the same thing with tenants. You're obviously objective to make sure they meet all of the qualifications. But one thing that I've seen is that the more you talk to someone, the more you know if their story lines up. And that is probably the most important thing that I've learned about businesses. Don't rush into it. Yeah. Have multiple conversations with people. Because you might have you know, a tenant right on their application that they don't have a pet. But, you know, then you're talking to them and they slip somehow that they do have a pet and it's not an emotional support animal. <laughs> and, yeah. um, so the more that you talk to people um, through business, the more comfortable you get with them. And I think that's something that people forget to do very much up front when they're screening folks. So that's everything from contractors, talking to contractors, to talking to managers, to talking to your repair coordinator, um, you know, talking to tenants. The more you talk to them, the more you can build up that trust. And of course, you have your objective criteria, just like you have a buy box to buy a property. You have a box for your tenant qualifications too. But you want to make sure the story aligns. So what they're saying is objective. You want to make sure that truly is the case. And so I found in a lot of situations um, that the more you talk to people, the more interviews you have, the more you meet with them in person, um, that reputation gets built up. And that's incredibly important, not only in this step of the process, but if you're looking to buy a property as well and really making sure that you've done your diligence and worked with someone over time and spoken to others who've worked with them, um, the realtor, because the more you hear about, did this work out? Did they purchase a rental property, a real estate investment through them? And it actually performed. How did they feel about it um, afterwards? Did they feel like, you know, they were um, provided the right information about the area if it's a local agent. I think all of that is really, really important. And so I want to kind of emphasize here the need to pick up a phone, talk to people and continue with relationships rather than just thinking, I'm going to take the shortcut and do it really quickly mm -hmm. and just be able to, you know, um, get what I want and it's going to cash flow right away. Yeah. One of the things that, again, kind of tie all this together, right? If you're going to be a landlord, my average tenant stays in single family homes about eight years. It might be seven and a half years now. Wow. Uh, apartments, just over two years. That's a lot of communication, a lot of follow-up, uh, a lot of repair requests, rent collection, maybe some late pays, you know, those, you know, this stuff happens, right? It's real life, but it's always that relationship. It's not transactional, right? If, if, yep. um, if you're not, if you're treating that individual as a transaction, it's not going to end well, uh, long term, and tenant turnover, right? Turnover property is what kills most landlords. It's not, it's not the leaky faucet. It's the yeah. turn every twelve months that just burns cash flow. So I, I really do strongly suggest that you uh, treat it as a people business, where where cash flow kind of falls out. Um, ten, you know, obviously tenants are human beings. Treat them as such. Respect them as such. Uh, but also follow the rules, right? If a tenant doesn't doesn't follow the rules, got to go. And especially if you're uh, operating a multifamily, right? One tenant can po poison a building, and yep. um, you know, really watch that. And then lastly, tenant selection. I see a lot of landlords who get in trouble 
And it's because they sacrificed something on the tenant selection, right? Uh, they, they thought a vacant property was more expensive than, a, than putting somebody there. And trust me, putting in a bad tenant is far more expensive than a vacant unit. Than a vacant um, unit, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so folks, again, time, trust. I love that Himalayan's out there now instead of Excel and email because it gives me the audit trail. It gives me consistency. It gives me follow-up. It gives me reminders. It allows me to coordinate with different folks. I can still be, you know, the guy behind the curtain, you know, kind of being the puppet master. Uh, but yeah, time and trust is critical in this business. And um, remember that. And uh, yeah, any other thoughts? Yeah, the last thing I would say is, you know, there's always a, a an area like this gray area, right, where you have someone two points below your credit score or something like that, right? And you have this buy box, but no one else has qualified, right? And so you say, hey, should I take them or not? That's where I think the timing really kicks in to get to know this person more? Do you increase the security deposit slightly because they don't meet that um, tenant mm -hmm. qualification box, et cetera? And so, yeah, I would, I would just encourage people to consider relationships, picking up phones, talking to people more, especially in those early days. Once you've worked with someone, you can shoot something off to them. You know, they'll get it done. You know the quality. Um, but until then, you definitely need to put in the work. Yeah. At the end of the day, folks, if you're going to be a landlord, please remember these words. You are in the people business. If you want to get a platform to help you track, audit trail, communicate, all that good stuff, where can they go? You can go to www.hemlane.com and just mention um, one rental at a time for 20% off your first year. Awesome. Thank you so much.